morning, everyone. It is truly a pleasure to be with you this morning, and thank you for having us. As Pastor Roger said, we're just coming off our 118th convention here in the state of Pennsylvania that the Gideons have been around, and uh, so it's truly an honor to be here. I wanted to start off with a testimony, if I could, and hopefully you'll see just through the placement of one Bible many years ago is still impacting lives today. Because this testimony goes back to the 1930s, believe it or not, where there was a young man named Tim Spencer growing up in Oklahoma. Tim was growing up there, and his family worked in lead and zinc mines in Oklahoma. And Tim said that, you know, life was tough, and the mines were dangerous, and he didn't want to be a miner all his life. He thought if he stayed there, he'd probably die young. And so Tim went out and bought a ukulele, eventually bought a guitar, started playing the bars to make money, and eventually moved to California. And he met up with a couple other men, uh, Bob Nolan and Leonard Sly, and they formed a band and started singing and playing music. And the one guy, Leonard Sly, he also, this time Hollywood's starting to come about, and he wanted to get into movies. He thought, what type of, you know, who's going to pick up Leonard Sly? So he changed his name. Does anyone know what Leonard Sly changed his name to? Roy Rogers. So Leonard Sly became Roy Rogers, and their group that they named uh, the Pioneer Trio changed their names to Sons of the Pioneers. And they started performing music, and Tim Spencer was writing the music for Roy Rogers. And I'm embarrassed to say, but in 1949, they had a hit song called Cigarettes, Whiskey, and Wild, Wild Women. And the problem was, was Tim was living that life on the road. Tim was married, and during that time of that hit song, his wife went to the pastor back at their home church and said, Pastor, I don't know what to do with Tim. He's on the road all the time, and when he comes home, he's distant. He doesn't want to be part of the family. I can't get him to come to church. And he said, Pastor, what do I do? And the pastor said, he said, well, here's what I want you to do. And this shows the age of the testament, because he said, I want you to write a letter. Tim, when he's on the road, you know his points to destination. I want you to write a letter that's going to be there at every point of destination that he gets to. There's a letter from you. And I want you to put scripture in each letter that's going to remind him of the word of God. And so she started doing that. And we don't know what the scripture was. But we know in 1949, in a hotel room in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, Tim Spencer read something, and he went, and there was a Bible place there in the Gideons, by the Gideons in that hotel, and he picked that up and started reading God's Word. And that night, Tim Spencer prayed and gave his life to Jesus Christ. You know, you think, well, that's a great testimony. But you see, it doesn't end there, because Tim Spencer... Kept writing music and singing with Roy Rogers, got his life on track, and he formed a, a music publishing company called Man of Music. And they were publishing music, and one summer, Tim's kids went to a church camp. And they came home, and they said, Dad, they, they kept singing this song at camp, and it, it was really a, a nice song. And we told the guy that, that wrote the song that, you ought to let us take this to our dad and see if he can do something with it. And so Tim started working with this camp person on rewriting this song and arranging it. And in uh, 1957, George Beverly Shea sang this song 99 times at a Madison Square Garden revival that Billy Graham was doing this crusade. And this world was introduced to the song How Great Thou Art. Came out of that. And let me ask you this. How many People around the world have been impacted by how great thou art. Probably everyone in this room. And you know what? And the testimony doesn't stop there. Because the guy that was telling, we heard this testimony at a conference we were at, and the guy that was telling it proceeded to say, he was in a church in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And he was hearing a guy tell this testimony. And the guy telling the testimony was an he was the academic dean of a Bible college in Malawi, East Africa. It was the grandson of Tim Spencer, Dr. Stephen Spencer. 
who had been this academic dean of, of a Bible college for 19 years. Now let me ask you this. Now we have one Bible that's not only impacted the world through music. How many lives do you think that, that Dr. Stephen Spencer is impacting in Africa and around the world as he's producing missionaries to go out? See, I, we never know how God is going to use His Word. We just know that we need to be faithful in getting it out there and sharing it. I wanted to read a few verses, if I may. I just wanted to go to Romans, and I'm, these are probably familiar verses for you, but I wanted to read from Romans 10, 14-17, where it says, How then shall they call on Him in whom they not believed? And how shall they believe in Him in whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? And then verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing the Word of God. People need the Word of God. People need the Lord. One time I was reading a devotional by Dr. David Jeremiah, and he said, Every spiritual battle that we will face will be in our mind. That's where the battle starts. That's why we've got to fill it with God's Word. So a little bit about the Gideons International. Currently, to give you an update, we have about 243,000 members worldwide um, with really one purpose, and that's to, to share the, God's Word with the, the loss of the world, with the hopes of winning the loss to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We partner with our wives in the auxiliary. Um, the auxiliary is a very important part of our ministry. They partner us with us as we go out and play scriptures. They partner with us and they're also our prayer partners. The Gideon started back in 1899 and won't go into a lot of history, but the ministry actually started out by traveling businessmen who really wanted to form an organization that would support one another on the road because traveling salesmen at that time wasn't a very well-respected um, business to be in because there was a lot of distractions for men out in the road. And this was an organization formed to support those traveling businessmen so they could support one another in their walk with Christ. But in 1908, they started placing hotel Bibles so the men would have Bibles available and that ministry has now just grown to not just um, hotels and motels, but schools and prisons and colleges. And, and there's so many dif different points of distributions that we have today. One thing we do is we also, Pastor mentioned, where we, you know, we do win to other countries. We have Gideons in over 200 countries and territories today across the world. So when you think about when you're supporting the Gideons, you're actually supporting a ministry as an extension of your church in over 200 countries, we have members doing the work. And this past uh, year, last August, I had the opportunity, I was blessed to have the opportunity to go to the country of Indonesia and work with the Gideons in Indonesia, handing out Bibles. And we went to Indonesia with a, with a goal of handing out 150,000 scriptures in five days. We were there a week, but essentially had five days of work to hand out 150,000 scriptures was our goal. And we saw God work in incredible ways while we were there. I remember one school that we went into, uh, the team that I worked with, that I led, we were um, visiting mostly, we did schools and uh, hotels. And I have to tell you, we were not turned away from one school in the country of Indonesia. And you think, well, is that really a big deal? Well, it is more challenging in our own country, but you have to understand, Indonesia is a country that is 87% Muslim. It's the most populous Muslim country in the world today. It's illegal to proselytize the Muslims. You can go to jail. And um, we were able to go into schools, and we had certain criteria that we had to follow. One school we went into, we were scrutinized by the headmaster. Every time we went to a school, we had to go to the headmaster's office. Most of these were cold call visits. We weren't, you know, weren't a lot of them were pre-set up. We would go. We'd have to meet with the headmaster, explain to them what we wanted to do, and they would sort of give us the lay of the land of how we could do it. Uh, one school that we were really scrutinized in, the headmaster was a Muslim woman. And she was, um, allowed us to go in, gave us some pretty strict criteria. 
and she was going to follow us classroom to classroom to make sure that we stuck to it. And that was fine. My interpreter, I have, will tell you, that uh, he did say to the headmaster, he said to her, and this was an example of the Bible that we were giving out there, and in it, one page, when you open it up, one page is English, one page is Indonesian. A lot of the schools, believe it or not, 87% Muslim country, they were using this to teach English. Go figure. <laughs> but we went in this, this school, and she started following us around. My interpreter, Stephen, said to her, he said, uh, you know, he said, would you like a copy of what we're handing out today? And she's like, no, I can't, I can't have that. So as we went through the classrooms, we couldn't, in this particular school, weren't permitted to share the full gospel message. But what we could do as we shared of what we were handing out, we were able to share about this book being God's Word. We could share about, in the front was a help section, where to turn to in God's Word when you would need, if you're afraid or anxious or worried or wearied, here's where you can turn to. And then... We couldn't really step through the plan of salvation in this particular school, but we could go through and say, and in the back, if you open it up, here's God's love story to you, telling you how much he cares for you and how much he loves you and how much this book will answer any issue that you'll face. So those are some of the things we could do. But you know what happened is we started going classroom to classroom that Muslim headmaster, you know, at the beginning we would say, if you'd like a copy of God's Word, raise your hand. And, and we were initially, she told us, only non-Muslim students, no Muslim students could have it, only non-Muslim. And so we would say, you know, raise your hand. And she would say, non-Muslim only, or they would say Christian only. If you weren't a Muslim, you were Christian, even though they weren't all Christian. But after, about halfway through the classrooms, she started encouraging students. She was hearing the message over and over again about what was in this book. And she started looking at students and say, you know Muslim, you know, raise your hand. By the time we got to the last classroom and we were handing out the, the, the Bibles in the last classroom, my interpreter, Stephen, said to her again, he said, would you like a copy of God's Word? And she took it. She not only took it, and I apologize, I didn't, I didn't bring the slides this morning, but, and she wanted her picture taken with the Gideons with her holding her testament. So I have a picture on my phone of this Muslim headmaster who didn't really want us there now holding a copy of God's Word. That, to me, shows the power of God's Word. And we saw God work like that over and over again in Indonesia. It was just a blessing to be there. Pastor mentioned, um, you know, millions of Bibles. Actually, since 1908, the Gideons have handed out 2.5 billion Bibles now around the world. And we can't do the support, that, the work that we do without the local churches and the support that you provide. Um, at the same time, at that 2.5 has produced just thousands of testimonies that come back about how God is working. And through that, you know, we always say it's the fulfillment of Isaiah 55, 11, where it says God's word will not return void. It's going to accomplish his purpose. There was a testimony, of a man that we were talking to shared a testimony. He said it was so unreal, he didn't believe it. He actually had to call the guy that was on the scripture blitz. There was a scripture blitz to, to Brazil. And when he heard the testimony of this, uh, he's like, I, I, I didn't believe. So he called the guy that was on the blitz that actually experienced this. He said, yeah, it's true. He said, they went into Brazil, and the first day on the Blitz, this team started going into the schools, and um, they were handing out testaments, and they go into the classroom, and the classroom was an English class, and the teacher is like, oh, the Gideons, we've been praying for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've been waiting for you, because we knew you were bringing us Bibles, and it'd be English Bibles, and, and the Gideons looked at each other and said, we brought Portuguese Bibles. We're in Brazil. And the teacher was like, no, you don't understand. We knew the Gideons were coming. We were told ahead of time you were coming. We know, we've been praying. Because this English teacher wanted Bibles to teach English. And, and they were like, well, we're sorry. We only have Portuguese. And he's like, no, I know you brought English. And he went over, opened up a box of Testaments and pulled out a small Testament. And he said, see, it's in English. And the, and the guy's 
looked at it and he said, it was. It was an English Scripture. And so, and what was even more powerful was in this classroom, the Testaments had over a box of 100. There were 97 students, one teacher, and two Gideons. 100. Came out perfect. So each Gideon wanted one as a souvenir to say, this happened. So now it's their first day in Brazil, right? They're there to be handing out Testaments in Portuguese. And they're thinking, how many more cases are going to be in English when we're supposed to be handing out Portuguese? Out of 5,000 cases that were shipped to Brazil, the one case that showed up in the classroom that was praying for English Bibles, that was the only case of English Bibles that arrived on that trip to Brazil. All other 4,999 cases were in Portuguese. Did God have a plan? I'm amazed. My wife and I have been in the Gideon ministry now for 17 years. I know I don't look that old, right? <laughs> um, until I look in the mirror. Um, but I, I, I shouldn't be. I always say I'm amazed, but I shouldn't be amazed at how God works. A similar testimony, not quite as impactful, but I was at junior out of college one time in Huntington. We live in Huntington County, and, our, and we went there, and we were doing a distribution at the dining hall one night. And I had a, a young lady come up to me and was talking, and she was a Christian, and she was sharing with me that she was actually going to be going to China for the summer. And she said to me, she said, I don't suppose you have a Chinese testament. Now, this is before the time of Bible apps. She said, I don't suppose you have a Chinese Bible that I could take, because she said, I'd like to be able to have a Chinese Bible while I'm there to maybe share my faith. Now, if you knew where I lived, and I, I don't actually live in Huntington. I live in what I call Backwoods, Pennsylvania, where I live. <laughs> uh, we live out in the country, and uh, if you knew where I lived, you'd think, well, what's the chances of this guy having a Chinese Bible on him? Well, we were there handing out Bibles to the college students, but what happened to me was that year I was also in charge of putting together a display for the Huntington County Fair. So I got online to the Gideon website, and I thought, well, I'm going to buy some various Bibles. Don't ask me why, but I happened to think, well, let's get a Chinese Bible. And it was like this, where it was Chinese on one page and English on the other, and I ordered it. And when the Bibles came, so I wouldn't forget, I threw them in the trunk of my car, so I'd have them with me when I got to the fair. So that night, when this young lady at the college said, would you by chance have a Chinese Bible? I was like, oh yeah, I got one in my car. I mean, God had that orchestrated long before I even thought about it. But those are the type of things that we just see over and over again. But you know what? One of the things coming out of COVID, I think in our world today, I think people are more hungry now and searching for answers than ever. We have a tremendous opportunity, not only around the world, but here in our own country. And as I go out to churches and, and speak, you know, there's, there's things that I ask for from churches. One is, foremost, is your prayers. The Gideon Ministries are very prayerful ministries. On Saturday mornings around the country, Gideons get together, and they pray for not just the Gideon Ministry, but they pray for the local pastors and the churches and the congregations and the missions you support. And we just ask that you do the same for the Gideons, that you'd lift up the Gideon Ministry in prayer uh, to pray that doors open around, not only around the world, but here in our own country. Ask you, you pray for those in the field. In some countries, people literally risk their lives to hand out copies of God's Word. And also, we do ask that you pray for funds. As Pastor mentioned, as Gideons, we pray our own expenses, but 100% of your proceeds go towards the, the distribution, the purchase and distribution of those Bibles. And... Um, takes funds to do that. I tell people, when I went to Indonesia, that would have never occurred. We actually ended up giving out 163,000 Bible scriptures that week in Indonesia. None of that could have happened without the support of the local churches. We couldn't have done that. And the other thing is, I'll, I'll be honest, pray for membership. If you're a business professional man and are interested in the Gideons, please come see me afterwards. I have some packets to hand out. Uh, we need membership. There's a lot of work to be done, and um, we, we need partners to do it. And even if maybe you don't want to be a member of the Gideons, we have something called now the Friends of the Gideons. 
or you can go to friend, uh, friendsofthegideons.org, and there's no, no um, fee to join, but there's certain benefits you can get, and you can order some scriptures to hand out, and but it's a way to partner with the Gideons, and you can get included in some local events. One of the things I share that the Gideon ministry has done, I think for my wife and I together, is it's helped us grow together spiritually in our walk with the Lord. And, and you don't have to raise your hand, but let me ask you this. Has anyone ever struggled to share their faith? Have you ever? I always say, I don't know which is harder. Is it harder to share with a total stranger and witness to a total stranger? Or is it harder to witness to a dear, close, personal friend or a family member? Because you start getting those doubts in your mind. Like, well, what if I don't say the right thing? Or what if I say the wrong thing? Or what will the, what, how will they react? And we just have to be faithful in planting the seeds. We don't know how people are going to react. But we need to be faithful in sharing our faith. I, I know one time I work in a hospital and my, my wife called me one day and her uncle was in the hospital. And she said, you know, Kirk, he, he's not doing very good. It doesn't look good for him. And almost immediately, I just, the Lord laid upon my heart, like, you need to go talk to him. Because I, I knew her uncle and I didn't know where he stood with the, with the Lord. Um, I didn't think he was a believer, but I didn't know. But I, had, I felt compelled to go talk to him. And I actually had a small testament on me, which is Gideon's we are encouraged to have with us. But I went up to his bedside and got to his room and had the opportunity to go in. And when I went in, he was sleeping. And this is where the battle started. I walked up to the foot of the bed and I was like, ah, he's sleeping, I don't want to wake him. I'll come back later. Easy way out. Well, I got to the door and I was like, Something's like, what if you don't get another chance? So I went back to the foot of the bed. Three times I went to the foot of the bed, and three times I went back to the door, struggling with, should I wake him or not? Well, his eyes opened. He said, hey, what are you doing here? So I went up and talked to him. You see, about a month or two prior to this, his brother had passed away. And his brother had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And at his funeral plan of salvation. The gospel message was shared at his funeral. So I knew he had heard the gospel message. I just didn't know if he ever did anything with it. And so we sat there and we talked about his brother and, and, and the funeral and the message. And we talked about some of the struggles he had. And I was able to take him through the help section. And I was able at the end to talk about the plan of salvation and that gospel message he heard. And I just said to him, I said, you know, do you understand? And he said, yes, I do. I said, have you ever accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And he said, no, I haven't. And I said, would you like to do that today? And he said, yes, I would. And that day, I was able to pray with her uncle as he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I tell people, I don't say that, tell that testimony to build myself up. I share that testimony to say, I have the same struggles as most people. It's hard sometimes. And we, when we're faithful, sometimes you reap the harvest, other times you don't. But we're planting seeds. And that's my encouragement to you. You don't have to be a Gideon to share your faith. We just have to be bold and willing to do it. And sometimes you see it. Most times, I have a testimony that Gideon was giving out Bibles, I don't know, 60 years. And he didn't know until he was in a nursing home one day of a life he impacted. One life he felt where somebody came back. And he was faithfully handing out copies of God's words for years. And when he was in a nursing home, learned of a life that he impacted. You just don't know. One of the other comments around membership is, you know, today the United States of America is the third largest mission field in the world today. I tell people, we've gone one, two generations now with prayer and Bible reading to coming out of schools. When I was in school, we still had that. But now we've gone a couple generations. If you had, when I was in school, if a young person didn't have a Bible or a godly influence at home, they still had prayer and Bible reading every day. They heard God's word. We've gone a couple of generations. If they don't have a godly influence at home, they've never heard, maybe never heard 
God's Word. They may not even have access to a Bible. That's where membership is so important. We need to get copies of God's Word out into the schools, out into the youth. 80% of the scriptures we hand out worldwide are to youth, believe it or not. So, as I think about other ways, the financial, I know Pastor mentioned the, the, the bulletin, sir, I appreciate that. I saw you have a Gideon card display, if you're familiar with that, where you can send a, like a memory of, a recognition of, card, various cards you can send to donate Bibles in memory of a loved one. Or re- My wife's wonderful with cards. She sends things in recognition of gradu- graduations, anniversaries, birthdays, whatever, uh, new babies. Uh, she uses the cards a lot. I tell people, and if you don't want to do the physical cards, in the electronic world, more people are using technology. There's a site, sendtheword.org. If you go to sendtheword.org, you can actually electronically send cards as well and do that all electronically. I know I'm out of, about out of time. So I want to be courteous of that. I, just to share another testimony. And again, we, we met a family member uh, that knows this family. But there's a, on the back of the cards, there's always a testimony. And one of the cards my wife purchased was in October, is Pastor's Appreciation Month, and she purchased pastor cards uh, to send to some of our pastor friends. And on the back of the one card, again, as I think in a, on this particular card was a testimony that I just, again, you never know. And this was a testimony from the Philippines where it says, my grandfather received the New Testament while he was growing up in the Philippines. He read it every day and he was saved. He became a pastor and he prayed that his sons would become pastors too. God answered his prayers. All five of his sons became pastors. And so did their 15 sons, including me. And God used that family to start over 600 churches. Because it's just one copy of God's Word that went out. So I really, really appreciate the support of your church for the Gideon ministry. As I said earlier, we can't do the work that we do. We're missionary extensions for for you in this church. We appreciate your support to allow us to do work that has impact like you heard this morning. And there's for every testimony we hear, there's many we don't. So we just want to be faithful in getting copies of God's Word out. And I thank you all for being partners in that ministry with us. God bless you.